Uh, okay, let's get started calling the meeting to order. Uh, we are going to postpone uh, looking over the minutes and approving them today for January because uh, we don't have any copies around. Unless, uh, unless everyone has already read them and has comments on them. And some people were not able to open the... Oh, right, Sean couldn't right. open it, so... I yeah, we'll, hey, Peter. So uh, we'll postpone the uh, minutes approval until our March meeting. Uh, okay, reuse center building report. Um, who is best to, I to make that report? Matt, can you do that? Yeah, with some help from Susan and <laughs> anyone else on uh, Peter, Debbie, or are both on the <laughs> subcommittee too. But I'll start and then anybody can chime in. Um, so we've met several times since the last reuse committee meeting and have been, again, tweaking the, the business plan and the latest changes have I'll just briefly touch on the latest changes that we've made. Um, we're working on a plan for oversight of the uh, proposed reuse facility. And what we're thinking is that there would be an advisory board of some sort with probably something like seven to nine members, which would include um, people, you know, perhaps from city government, uh, perhaps a local contractor, a real estate person, uh, a social service person or two, uh, and some members from this committee, and basically <coughs> they would uh, handle most of the, and BPW representation too, and possibly an engineer from the, the Board of Public Works. Um, and that group would work together to basically oversee and set policy on the, the reuse center. So that's something we've been working on. We're also looking at um, how to set up a simple record keeping system where we can uh, get data on what the quantity of material and the weight of material and the type of material that comes in and goes out so that we can down the road say to the community, this is how much stuff we are saving from the solid waste stream basically, which will help to, to justify our existence and also give us uh, information about what stuff is moving and what stuff isn't and that kind of thing. Um, we're, uh, <coughs> let's see, what else? Um, we've talked, we, we, we have expanded the section on staffing a little bit. Um, again, we're going to be heavily relying on volunteers who are well trained and have job aids to help them understand what they can receive and accept and what they can't. Um, We've talked a bit about money, um, and are, again, as we've discussed in the past, really we're trying to keep it as simple as possible and avoid the handling of money uh, at, the at the center itself. We're thinking there may be situations where people bring in something that normally they would have to pay a fee to dispose of, and it might look reusable, and we may consider asking them to pay the fee, but accept the stuff for the for the reuse center and see if it moves. Um, but we feel like we can't really accept stuff uh, unless we that's normally uh, there's normally a fee for unless we accept it. We ask the fee, so we're work we're working on that. Um, we're working also on some appendices for the the business plan that that I have sent out, and one <coughs> one appendix is basically a history. Susan put together a great history of the long road towards <laughs> Rio Center in Northampton starting in I think 1998. So it just, without being, you know, finger pointing and judgmental, it basically just goes through. We tried this in this time, we tried this in this time, this appeared in the newspaper, this public official said this. It's just a great one or two page history of the efforts to establish a Rio Center and that would go along with the business plan as we when we present it. Um, the other appendix that we're working on is um, a sampling of regional swap shops and some basic information about how they operate and contact information so that uh, anyone interested can compare a bit with what we're doing with what's already going on out there. And we're going to be talking more about that in our meeting after this meeting here, our small group meeting. Um, and there was a third appendix. Appendix, 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 uh, which was we would like to try to capture a kind of um, explain the talents that 
that are going to be put towards this project. I, I think people don't know much about members of the committee and what their backgrounds are, but between all of us, we have some really formidable skills. Um, I learned that Peter has cost accounting don't background. Don't emphasize that too much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's so past life. I, I have a I have a background in uh, retail management of a secondhand clothing store chain. Um, Debbie has is a is a professor of art. I mean, there's just lots of really great skills. So a third appendix will be, you know, these are the people who are going to be working on this, and these are the these are the skills that we're bringing that are going to be volunteering their time make this happen and um, so that would be a third one. Um, <clears throat> before the meeting started uh, we were outside, David and I were outside talking a little bit about the whole question of um, money and specifically resources that are required from the city to help us uh, get the, the center up and running and David agreed since he has some expertise in that area to help us to uh, create uh, some costs, uh, you know. So well, well, I think what we need is a three-year business plan. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, essential for the mm -hmm. city to be able to approve anything. Mm -hmm. They're going to need to know what the costs and services are that they're going to have to provide, and it's going to be helpful for us to know. And I would also recommend that uh, the, the committee or, or this committee invite a member of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to our next uh, meeting because I think we're kind of evolved enough in the the mission statement that you guys have created where they can speak to us about funding that we can get, uh, grants that we can put together that they can help us with. For instance, if you want to scale or the, uh, we might be able to get it donated, but we might not. We may just write a grant for the $10,000 of things that we're going to need in order to get this mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. started or the ten thousand dollars of uh, or fifty thousand dollars of renovations that need to happen to the structure itself in order to get it started and those are services that could be donated from uh, from getting a grant mm -hmm. uh, through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission they were involved I can't remember if it was the reuse center that they were involved with original no it was it was, it was I was I was explaining to Susan that this committee really comes out of a composting initiative. Uh, that's where it all started, was a conversation mm -hmm. with Alternative Recycling and uh, a few of the people that were on this committee at the time or that were involved in, in the city's solid waste reduction. Uh, so, but in any case, so the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has already been involved with this okay. committee and, and I know who works there that's really interested in solid waste that uh, would probably embrace the idea of getting involved to do that. Who is that? Uh, what is her name? Um, Danny, uh, Danny, Danielle. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, I know what she looks like. I can't think of her name, but I know what she looks uh, like. I, Cone, I think, was her last name, and mm -hmm. then maybe she, she got married and changed it. I can't remember exactly. But in any case, um, I have her contact information. So that's that's how I would like to kind of uh evolve the uh the business plan so david you'll invite her i will invite her and yeah. i will take a, a first draft stab mm -hmm. uh before matt gets back from his trip mm -hmm. <laughs> uh to um at, at the first draft of what our first three years are mm -hmm. going to look like and i'll just base it on what you guys have written mm -hmm. okay and does does it make sense <coughs> talk speaking about the expenses involved in getting the building ready, <clears throat> does it make sense to have a follow-up conversation with Ned about what, because he kind of, if I, if I remember correctly, he kind of promised that us that the city would take on the basic repairs okay. to make sure that that place is structurally sound and, you know, weatherproof yeah, I, I don't and so know that forth. I would call it a promise, but <clears throat> he, there was a, there was definitely an indication that that there would be, you know, that he assumed that there would be some um, assistance in making that happen. So I don't, you know, <coughs> I don't want to say it was a promise, but it well, was, well, again, even, it was even a there, definitely a strong. Ned's going to appreciate if we go to the PVPC to get a grant, and the city's going to see part of that money to help them make those renovations. Mm -hmm. It's going to really smooth things over. And so. what kind of turnaround time, David, would something like would a would a grant like that? 
I, I guess it depends on where it's coming from. Yeah. So, uh, you know, sometimes there are grants that are just out there waiting to mm -hmm. be, okay. and particularly my hope is that because of the DEP's direction uh, on solid waste reduction and the things that they're trying in different communities, that they will have money available immediately mm -hmm. uh, to put towards something like mm -hmm. this. And, you know, as you know, Susan, if, if a grant is small enough, mm -hmm. a lot of times it doesn't have to go through a lot of hierarchy. It just mm -hmm. can be fast-tracked. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. There is a, <coughs> excuse me, we had originally, we had, we've been speaking of opening something this summer. So the question right. is, is it really um, possible to do the work that needs to be done and get open. Now, on one hand, it's not that much work. There's some cleaning. There's the inside of the walls need to be, um, you know, faced with either plywood. We talked about using old old doors, um, which Eco Building Bargains is willing to um, help us with. The outside needs to have some some work done. We would like to have. We need to. Um, Mar demarcate a, a parking lot and maybe have some barriers so that people uh, don't drive through that the transfer station is kind of um, separate so that there isn't a lot of confusion between the two um, so there it's really kind of oh and lighting I guess that's probably the biggest thing is, is lighting including um, daylight Sorry. Including daylight and need some clear, clear windows. Well, that's a that's more of a wish than a necessity. I mean, if we have good lighting in there, <coughs> you know. So, I mean, I'm just thinking of what the bare bones are that we would need, and and that's it. So it's not a whole lot. We've talked about having um, maybe Smith Folk and some of their construction and engineering people help out with some of that work. Um, I'm, I haven't spoken to Ned about what the city can do versus what we would need to have volunteer help or organize with. I do know, <coughs> excuse me, I just <coughs> learned that the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund is not doing very well. And it's, um, so that's going to really be a bummer. Um, and so whatever we can do on a shoestring is going to help our <coughs> help this happen and get off the ground. Well, again, so it might mean that that we don't get the outside looking, that, you know, with me, uh, other than a coat of paint. You know, I, I don't know, but I just want to be realistic because they're they're looking at a deficit for fiscal year 2015, which starts January, July 1st of over $100,000. Um, so it's, it's, I just want to be realistic. We might have to adjust our um, we're not asking for much, but we might have to do with less. But let me ask uh, one question before we move on from uh, this agenda item. Um, how much work has been done in terms of documenting best practices at other reuse centers around the Northeast? Not a lot yet. That's something that we're going to be talking about. Because that should today. absolutely be a part of the plan. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you have contact names at the reuse centers, uh, I would like to call them because if I'm going to put this budget together, they can probably save me a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, we're going to do some calling. Uh, well, we're going to we were going to split up yeah. some of the names and have people start doing calling to get some of the information. You, you can add me to the list of okay. people that will call around, and then what I should do is give you a list of questions yes. for whoever's going to call the place that I don't call uh, about about the budget. Well, we're meeting for a few minutes after mm -hmm. this meeting, so I if have you're available, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. Okay. And, and we've started to generate some other questions we think would be helpful to ask them, too. So so that's definitely one of our next steps, um, is is contacting other places, um, making contact with the Planning Valley Planning Commission, completing these appendices that we're working on, and we'll continue to tweak the business plan. And, and then at some point, uh, we talked about um, having a conversation with Ned about the business plan mm -hmm. and, and as as a first stage of preparing for eventually presenting it to the Board of Public Works. So mm -hmm. okay, let's let's move on. Thinking that it's not it's mm -hmm. up to us to bring it to the sure. Board of Public Works sure. as, as as many of us who would show up for that. Hey um, Susan, you know what would help me actually in putting this budget together mm -hmm. since we feel like this is something we have to sell to the city. It'd be helpful to me to see, get a sample budget from the DPW so I can see the format they like yeah. to see their budgets in, so that I can speak to them in their language. 
Um, so the next agenda item is finished organizational planning for uh, our reuse events. Um, the first one that's coming up is in March, is that right? Next month? Or is it not till April? Uh, no, April that, that was the, the adult spelling P is in yeah. March. Oh, you scared the bejeebies out of me. <laughs> oh. The adult spelling B that John is helping out with and, and uh, will likely need some help from the committee. Yeah, um, act is offered. Yeah, okay. It's March, and, um, it's March and, 26th. Right. So, uh, John, why don't you just briefly go over what your needs are for the event? Um, I think I'm not going to need anything until the actual event, um, which is, I think, from 5 to 9, more or less. Um, we'll just need probably a couple people to uh, make sure that the barrels are being taken care of correctly. That Again, the date it of it is? March 26th. March 26th. So, Jessica, you'll have that in the minutes, because, John, I should be able to show up at the event Great. To, uh, to do it. Um, it's at JFK. Right. Um, and it's actually, Jean has said she's going to publicize it as a garbage-free event. Great. Oh, that's great. Event, which is great. She's great. looking for something, a new twist on it, because yeah. it's like the 14th year. Yeah. So she's looking for something new. So that's nice. Uh -huh. um, so I think that will generate some buzz, and people might like that. And so they'll be aware no of it when they come in. <laughs> well, buzz well, for so, the spelling yeah. bee. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, so I, I, not a lot to do except just to be there. How, how many volunteers how would many, you like? Uh, you know, if, if you and Mac and I are there, maybe enough. Uh, certainly can crowd another person if we have to. But mm -hmm. really, I think I'll have everything set up. The, the custodial staff will have all the barrels where they belong. It's just a matter of sort of supervising and making sure people know what to do because this is a first for a lot of people. In Amherst, I call it compost coaching. <laughs> <laughs> I like that compost coaching. So this leads to the question of volunteer coordinator. And what did we come up with the last time? Do you have the copy of the minutes there, Jessica? I have. I have a copy I, I of. I of who we have for coordinators for various events. Okay, so uh, I think was it? I think I volunteered to be the volunteer coordinator. Is that right? Uh, for which? Well, for we're going to have one volunteer coordinator that's going to oversee all the events. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, right. Uh, yes, and that was you and Diana. I think we're going to work. Okay, great. Together. So I really need Diana to provide me with whatever exists so far, so that I can get started on that. Okay. Um, because our first event is April what? It's 12th. April 12th. Is that your Alex, event, um, no. Peter? Alex. No. The, uh, yeah, Alex and that Durables. I need Susan. to. <coughs> it is pellet bags, styrofoam, med medical durables, and paper shredding. And um, I have to. I have not secured the paper shredder people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they book up in advance. So I'm a little nervous about that. That's well, on who, my to do Whose event is today. it? Who's the. I was, the I was going to be the project lead. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are? One. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. okay, great. Um, yes. So, um, what do you need, Susan, in terms of volunteers? For I'm going to, it, it's not a whole lot of volunteers, mm -hmm. but, um, Th this you is know, what I, I would say, I would say, you know, five or six, maybe. I think what we need to do is create a form for each event. It's just a blank form that's going to go to the project lead mm -hmm. for each event. It's going to say, how many volunteers do you need? Mm -hmm. When do you need them? Mm -hmm. uh, how much money is yeah. required? Uh, what What are some of the other things? Oh, uh, the 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 after market people. Who's going to come and take the stuff at the end? We should really have a checklist. I have a I have a um, I have a form already that I've kind of been using myself. That's it's a nice kind of template in it because it helps you think about all the different considerations. Can you so, email it around to people? Uh, it's not an email form, but I will put it in an email form. All you got to do is photograph it uh -huh. and no. email it. I mean, I can, uh, yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Here. Um, I even can show you right now what it looks like. It's a, essentially, I mean, um, I'm just kind of a, the way my brain works. I thought it was, yeah. The way my brain works, I just kind of, I think of things in different pieces but then there's a whole bunch of pieces together. So what I did, is I, I just kind of made a, a bunch of different um, categories. And one is, you know, what kind of event it is, what the venue is, what partners, yep. community partners are going to be involved, what kind of volunteer situation we need, um, what positions are needed, um, who is going to take care of perks and food, um, safety, 
I love it. Consideration. That's perfect. Can you just um, zero publicity, yeah. Susan, that's, publicity, that's what we need. We don't have to yeah. change that at all. Yeah, publicity, perfect. signage, supplies, um, participants. Participants or volunteers? Meeting, no, participants are people, the public. Uh -huh. So um, how are we, you know, are we going to have them do evaluations, et cetera, and then clean up in equipment? So it's, it's <laughs> I, I, um, that's part of what I had to do to help kind of organize um, last fall because it was a lot of stuff coming bam 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 so if there's I'm a budget area on there i would say it's complete okay do, do you have advertising there is um, mm -hmm. advertising is under um the signage and oh, signage. Publicity, oh. Oh, publicity okay sorry, publicity right. Good. but then if but then if you send that to us we're not going to be able to fill it in right it's going to be a pdf or a well one of us can just make it into uh, another format so that we can so that it can be digitally Imagine. filled in at each time Make so it into a, a writable document, that kind of thing. Right. So, that so either a Word document or something. But that's writable to write on here. the computer. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And, yeah. and this, I mean, so what I, for what I, pers what I kind of thought in my mind's eye was that each event lead would take this and, and start working on it and then can meet with me and whoever else and the volunteer coordinators and we, mm -hmm. we have a plan. Is, is, is there anyone here that can take that document and put it into something that's in a writable format. Um, I can't do that. I mean, I have I a scanner at home, but I don't know how to, know, but that I don't know how to turn it into a fillable. Well, 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 that, well, well, type it. well no, that's no, right. No, no. It just needs to be typed into a, a Word, Word document. document. Yeah. Well, I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, do I'm happy to do that. But it has to be writable. Well, if it's Word, no, then it is writable. If it's Word, then it is writable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then you can, the kind of um, table. Yeah. you can also, we could, um, or it could be an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say an Excel, Excel might be spreadsheet because then you can protect, mm -hmm. you can protect the cells that has the have the information and and leave other cells blank that people can type in. Mm -hmm. So right. that might be yeah. a better so option. There we go. Excellent. That'd be great, Susan. Okay. Uh, because you know my concern is that the these events all get moving forward, uh, particularly the ones in the spring, mm -hmm. and we need to know that these things are being taken care of because most of us have not been project leads on these events before. Mm -hmm. So um, just to make sure that everything's moving forward the way it needs to. Mm -hmm. And I think we should review them at each meeting just to be sure. That's a great idea. Um, I do have a, one of the, there is still an event that does not have a project lead. Which one was that? Um, and that is the garden pot collection. and. Um, which is uh, at the SOS plant sale on May 10th and it's not a big deal at all um, I just at that time of year I'm low I'm hesitant to take the lead especially because I'm going to be I uh, have the um, hazardous household waste collection the next week mm -hmm. so I I, um, I I would like to see if somebody would be willing to take the lead on that And everybody jammed up at once. It really, I mean, I mean it, yesterday, I mean, last year, as far as I saw, I think Alicia was there probably most of the time, and she was saying she didn't really have a lot to do. She was kind of piling the pots. Right. Well, I, Mac and I were there last year with the. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think it's were we there the whole time? I was, yeah, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. I was too. What's the date on that one? Again? It's, it's May 10th. Mm. And you write that. It's, yeah. it's uh, alongside the SOS plant sale. It really is not a it's not a big deal so um, what's, if, if what, what's involved for something easy to <clears throat> what's involved promotion? would be working with promotion which is often a part of the sos plant sale i believe so just um, uh, uh, just uh, writing the coattails of the promotion for the sos essentially i mean there's there's stuff we do here in dpw and the press release and stuff like that it's um, arranging for volunteers uh, working with me to make sure that we have a dumpster there for to collect the the pots afterwards. Uh, that's about it. <coughs> I, mean, I, I don't. I can't think of anything else. It's very simple. Mm. Yeah, my like a lot of stuff was moving out as it was coming in. Yeah, you know, the, the probably the biggest risk, and this is a an issue for us in Amherst at the transfer station for, at our take it and leave it area is that you often get busy at a certain, uh, towards the end mm -hmm. of the event. And so that's when a lot of the pots are coming in. Mm -hmm. We're getting lots of pots in at that time. And not uh, um, because it's at the end of the event, 
there aren't as many people mm -hmm. coming to take them. So mm -hmm. you like get this kind of, not a glut, but you get a whole bunch of them. Some of them are really, really nice, but you don't have the flow of people mm -hmm. coming in. When did it end? So the reuse part was... When did it end last time? The parts, you have that parts part. The SOS sale goes to one. Yeah. One. So it's well, if the pots one. ended at 11.30 or noon with an hour break before the end of the actual event, uh -huh. so you don't, you know... No, it. it's more that people bring them when That's they're going to mean. the event. So, so it accumulates, uh -huh. and so some of the people early on would look over our pot selection and yeah. we didn't have a whole lot. Come 11, 12 o'clock, we had some fabulous pots, but mm -hmm. a lot of the people had come early to the event. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, um, it's not ideal for reuse, but they still are getting recycled. Well, my, just my impression was a lot of people didn't realize they could take them. I mean, I, uh, you know, yeah. people were saying, oh, like, it just, uh, there so wasn't enough signage. People just so didn't, didn't realize so signage three, what those. Three. Because yeah. I was telling people, oh, you can go take those. Yeah. I was like, oh, really? Oh, and they went yeah. and grabbed a bunch yeah. of them. I mean, they just. Yeah, they're just so focused on the plants. Like I got to get my plants. Right. Set. Mm -hmm. They're not mm -hmm. even thinking right. about the Right. So box. definitely, we could definitely have some more signage. But it is a very, very simple event. Mm -hmm. If it would just advertise so that an hour early is when the pots ends, you know, except that up till noon when the thing still goes to one, then folks would focus on the noon to bring if they're bringing pots. Yeah, hopefully. but it mm -hmm. makes it more complicated because then you've got yeah. different times for the same event, and it, it's a. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I mean, it's just, re it's nice and simple, you know, we're here if you want to recycle or get fresh pots. Mm -hmm. So was know. there a separate dumpster for the, was there a, uh, for the leftover pots? It's oh, yeah. Bulky yeah. Yeah. We had a dumpster. We had a dumpster. Yeah, we had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of well, but, but it's not a separate dumpster. Then a the separate dumpster. Then the SOS, does the, the SOS people, they don't have a dumpster of their own? They don't have, they don't need oh, one. okay. Because that's a swap. Mm -hmm. People yeah. just bring mm -hmm. plain yes. plates. That's all they do. Well, people right. are buying plain right. Speaking and of swap, we'll keep them. gets to the, maybe the next item. If, oh, well, is that well, we well, still, we don't have a project lead, so I just want to uh, make I, sure that no I'm one not that worried lead. about there not being a project okay. lead for this one, because there's so little to do. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm willing to volunteer that day. Uh -huh. I don't know if I'd want to do the project that. meeting. Okay. Um, so okay. let's let's postpone it till okay. till the March meeting. Yeah, we'll um, more well, people here to try. But but it should be in the minutes, <laughs> Jessica, that we're you looking know, for uh, someone. I, I've always helped with the SOS plant sale, so uh -huh. I didn't want to um, be the project lead. But in fact, last year I'm thinking I didn't really have a lot to do. Uh -huh. I used to do the compost, uh -huh. but my back doesn't let me do that anymore. So I didn't have a lot to do. So I could probably do that. And I'll oh, just talk to Jim great, Levy, John. who that'd runs it. Yeah. So why don't I do that? Okay, that'd be great. Okay. Great. Excellent. All right. Um, so Peter, have you started thinking about uh, your April yeah. 26th event? Very, uh, Roger and I chatted some and um, thinking of potentially adding to the name so it's spring well, tag sale and swap, community tag sale and swap meet, the asterisk by the swap meet goes to that we basically will encourage a lot of folks to bring a large free section. And uh, nothing sells like free, you know, <laughs> sort of a thing, um, because that would encourage the homeowners and uh, telling them, you know, this is a good way to get rid of a lot of stuff. To other mm -hmm. than you, mm -hmm. you go, you know, it's more less of a tag I'm sale. I'm yeah. sorry, you want to promote it as what? Community tag sale and swap meet, mm -hmm. and then there's an asterisk by swap meet. Which basically goes into nothing sells like free. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I would so so. Um, I I have. You're saying that you would people would be able to ha give stuff. They would be encouraged to come with a free pile. Most tag sales. So oh, free pile. I see. There's a free I pile see. out mm -hmm. by the road. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the twist is that you, they would be encouraged to have a free pile. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And that get them used to. They could come twice a year at uh -huh. least and they wouldn't have to worry about money they uh -huh. could just mm -hmm. they couldn't leave it you know right. I mean there'll be some rights, rights around that so so would you do you perceive people coming with just free stuff because that starts ringing alarm bells for me because I just don't want the DPW to be responsible for people leaving stuff no, no that's you know, taken right. care of by the you know the kind of usable useful stuff uh -huh. you know is what we encourage right, right. Um, so so will there, will there be someone to look at it when it gets there to just say yes this 
This can go in the free pile. No, they can put anything they want in the free pile. Well, I mean, they would free. have their own free pile, or yeah. there would be a one big community. Oh pile. no, no, no! Oh, Everybody yes. has, right. oh God, so, no! So you were looking at people <laughs> who are selling things who would also have. Yeah, a keep a part of the booth. Which some of them do yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Give, you know, give over part of, and I encourage see. that. I like that idea. Yeah. You know, to 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 grow yeah. more. Yeah. Um, the other thing would be a the a ten dollar non-refundable registration fee it's a rain or shine event but if officially canceled because of um overly inclement weather you will or your registration will automatically go to the next event which is saturday the october the 11th so that folks and and then it's explained that goes into um, publicity for the event, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Wait, uh, I missed that last part. You said it would be a non-refundable, and if you don't show up, what? No, if you don't show up, you lose. It's it's a non-refundable. Right. But if it's officially canceled, if, uh -huh. if the event is it because it's overly I inclement, see. there's uh -huh. you know, right. if it's a drizzle that time of year, uh -huh. hey, you know, you can come and do it or not. But mm -hmm. you, the ten dollars is up. It's oh. just too complicated. I know it was to have the booth clean afterwards, but I think we can, the cleanup <coughs> crew can police that enough that people will take it. I don't think anybody would leave stuff, right? In right. The booth, it is so. an incentive, though. Mm. It's a nice incentive. What? To get everything cleaned up. Yeah, yeah but I think that, to me, the complications, especially if you have spaces left at the last minute, you know, uh -huh. get people in, and then who gets a check back, and it, it, That part was not bad. I was surprised. Well, I was so sort of straightforward. I, as a doer, I'm thinking, oh, this is silly, and I write out a check each time to get the check back at the end, just so that I've been a good boy. Uh -huh. you know? I mean, I think we can encourage people to do it. They clean their booth you, before they drive out. You've got folks right. walking up and down. Well, We've got the Salvation Army. I'm happy yeah. to try anything once. The the only chance yeah. would, the only risk would be if, for some reason, we cannot accept money from people. Because of the DPW town um, city, you can always have them right at the Green Northampton. If you, you have, right. you always have that fiscal sponsor if you need it. Okay, well, yeah. well, I, I, I will check into that. Um, um, see, I think, I think this, this brings up the point that we do, we need another entity, like a, a waste not coalition or something, so that all of this money stuff. I would say eighty percent, ninety percent of the swap, the. Um, Reuse centers have that I've looked at do money. Mm -hmm. It's low cost, are, and especially as we go toward, I think of it more as a resource center, especially for artists. Um, because the committee, I'm going back to the other agenda, I mean, wants um, household to be very much included, not just art stuff. The first thing I see is a lamp collecting lamps especially, because lamp can be a lamp repair program at Smith Folk, mm -hmm. which takes an electrician, actually you're supposed to have an electrician's license to do that. Um, so in effect, getting, I've lost my train of thought now, and I'm under the weather, I'm sorry to say. Well, we'll have other opportunities to talk about it. I'm a little yeah. concerned about time, yeah. so if, if you don't mind, Peter. But I think it's just a ma it's a more of a commitment that way than it, it's it's a commitment. You pay ten dollars, right? You take your chances. If it's um, canceled, it goes to the next. It would certainly be it helpful to, to have the money for advertising. Yeah, I don't. I you know this money thing is is really becoming a block because it's got to go into the general fund, and you can't have it it's separate. Yeah. And don't do it through the DBW. Do it through Green North Bank, and you don't have any yeah. of that. Yeah. Well, that's that's we, even that. I need to make sure is cool. For us to do, I, I don't see yeah. why. But that, it that's be the perfectly right. the perfect right. way out because right. then it's not with all this bureaucracy. Um, so I have a request, Susan and Peter, for you, and that is that uh, this week you send me a list <coughs> of the number of volunteers you're going to need and when you're going to need them <coughs> and what their responsibilities are going to be. Yes, that I can start working on that. Yeah. And John, uh, you have an event on <coughs> May 17th and May 3rd. Right. That you're doing with Diana, the kids' right. stuff exchange, and uh, Bucky Ridge Plastic, plastic right. Collection. Yep. So, if you would get in touch with Diana and also come up with the same list for me, so that I can start working on volunteers for that. Okay. Susan, well, you have an event on May Susan. 17th as well. Oh, that's that's that hassle tires of wish. You don't need any. Uh, uh, but and the one other thing that I would like to remind people is that uh, Barbara Black 
was very impressed with our toy swap in December, and she is open to being a, a co-sponsor for any events that we do, which is terrific because she is a terrific conduit to the Northampton Public Schools. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to be in touch with Barbara as a promotional vehicle for each of our events, because she can just take care of promoting it throughout the public schools. How is she um, contactable? Do you know? Public schools. I have her public information. You go to the public school website, you'll find her. No, 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 no. Um, so, Susan, you're going to send out that, that form. Mm -hmm. When will you do that? Uh, because the sooner you do it, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really asking right. for a date, but the, right. but the point is, as soon as you do it, the project lead should really yeah. take that form and start filling in what they can. Right. So that they know how much they have left right. Well, I will, I will try to do it um, as soon as possible. Um, that might. Do uh, any of the other project leads need any information from us before we move on from this subject? I was going to mention an aside though about Barbara because you brought Barbara up. I went to the Northampton Parent Center and <clears throat> one of the volunteers, I mentioned the toy library idea and one of the volunteers at first she's like, oh, we don't really have space. And then she started getting really excited about it and she said, oh, I'll talk to Barbara Black about that to see if we could maybe do that here. Well, so I need to get in touch with her and see what that to conversation at the Parent Center. Uh huh. Yeah, you know, my reservation about the Parent Center is that it's open so few hours of the week mm -hmm. yeah but uh, but it's open mm -hmm. Monday through Thursday which mm -hmm. is more days than the toy library in Amherst mm -hmm. yeah the toy mm -hmm. library in Amherst is actually kind of struggling a little bit they um, are not getting a lot of use yeah she said they only had five people a week so well it's, right. it's a new idea it's you know a new it takes idea time and it's also you know I think it's important to do a little market research to see who your audience is and and if they're um, and, and who their concern, what their concerns are. I, I think it, <coughs> in hindsight, it probably would have been good to do a little um, focus group or something mm -hmm. on the about the toy library because people have mm -hmm. concerns too. You know, it's like, is are things sanitary? Mm -hmm. Are they cleaned in between? So, mm -hmm. you know, to identify what kind of obstacles people mm -hmm. would have to using a library, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. and just kind of um, go f keep that in mind as you develop your business plan and stuff like that. That, yeah. So that would be my recommendation for Northampton. And, and I would remind people, whenever you do a business plan, best practices are the, are the best <laughs> place to start. You've got to find out who's already done it, who's doing it, and because uh, they'll answer those questions for you. They've already gone down that road. Right. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> discuss recent ban activity. Um, yeah, I can take that one. I just right. wanted to give, uh, we can keep it relatively short. Uh, Jessica is going to talk a little bit about the My Eco bag situation. I just wanted to report that there's been a lot of <coughs> activity in Northampton and elsewhere for both bag, um, well, most, mostly for styrofoam, uh, expanded polystyrene, but uh, so as you might, might know, North, um, Let's see, we are now at Amherst, Brookline, <coughs> Nantucket, Great Barrington, Somerville, um, and most recently These Albany. These are all places with styrofoam bans? Styrofoam bans. Oh, just on takeout? Or? Just on takeout mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, food, food bans. Uh, and most recently Albany, New York <coughs> passed a ban, and New York City passed a ban. What the caveat for New York City is that they it's not going to be effective for a year, and they are ex, uh, they're giving the American Chemistry Council, who is kind of the lobbying organization for the plastics industry, they're giving them a year to try to come up with a, a recycling program that makes economic and environmental sense, which um, is is a tall order. I I, I know that it, it needs to make economic sense. I I believe that it needs to make environmental sense as well, but I, I don't know. Um, I have concerns because even if you collect it all in one place without generating tons of greenhouse gas, then you're going to have to use fresh water to clean it all before you can densify it. So it, it um, densify. should densify is what they do to, to uh, right. shrink it down so it can be shipped <coughs> to a manufacturer who will use it. That's what happens Melting with the foam. It, it's done with pressure and some heat. Yeah. yeah. 
So, um, so anyway, they might not have a ban in New York City, but it is looming. So that's kind well, of a well. The update. alternative to a ban sounds like it's viable, also, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And and what's interesting is that the um, somebody um, in a high position in the Department of Environmental Protection told me when Amherst was pursuing their ban that in the 1980s when styrofoam first got on the national radar as something that is not uh, environmentally uh, <coughs> it was because there was an ingredient in it that was harming the ozone layer and that's when Great Barrington banned it in 1989 oh, wow, or something wow, like that. Wow, wow. Yeah, so, um, huh. and they have, of course, since removed that chemical so that it's not an ozone issue anymore, but now other issues are coming up. But at that time, the plastics industry said that they were going to open recycling, regional recycling facilities for styrofoam. And that uh, they were gonna have three or four of them throughout the U.S. And she said, to her knowledge, none of them were built. Um, and if one was, it's no longer in use. So they, um, and then California Clean Water Action says that there was a document up on the website of American Chemistry Council for a couple of years by someone who said it's not economically feasible to recycle this stuff. Mm -hmm. That was a long time ago. That was before densifiers were more readily available. You know, maybe things have changed, but, um, it's you know, I my feeling is if it if it hasn't happened yet, mm -hmm. you know, um, part of the problem is that the material it doesn't have a lot of value once it's been densified. Mm -hmm. When you look at something like aluminum that takes so much money and so much time and energy to extract the bauxite ore from the earth and turn it into aluminum, and so it makes so much <coughs> sense to recycle aluminum, but when expanded polystyrene is a very small amount of polystyrene that has air blown into it. Yeah, so it's just not a very valuable commodity. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the point is really, it sounds like our energy should be to, to come up with alternatives to styrofoam so that it's not created to begin yes. with. As That's what it, it appears at this time. You know, yeah. may, maybe they'll come up with something really great. And well, well, my, you know, well the, the research has been with mycenium, right? So they're using mushrooms as yep. a, as an alternative. Yep. There is uh, in Rochester. I think Dell I computers know. or somebody was using looking at using mushrooms. So you could actually eat your. Um, <laughs> but that's for <laughs> your packaging. Well, that was for that was for uh, packaging computers. But but again, you know, single use serveware. It just it's you know. I don't want to get on my little soapbox. But anyway, I just wanted to give let you guys know that there are also. Um, there's a, a movement afoot in Northampton to have a ban. There is, excuse me. Um, on takeout styrofoam. On takeout styrofoam. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I met with some people from the governor's council from the high school, and, I'm, and I spoke with somebody from city council oh, uh, about some of my experiences in, in Amherst. So I'm not sure where that is today, but um, it is something that they're looking at. As far as plastic bag bans, I'm going to turn the table over to, Je uh, to Jessica, but I did want to say that I heard on Facebook, and I don't know if it's true or not, <coughs> I heard that Great Barrington banned plastic bags, and they're mm -hmm. the first Massachusetts community to mm -hmm. do so. No, that's not true, because I think Brookline did it. I think Brookline did it when they banned styrofoam. I think they mm -hmm. also banned plastic bags. Mm -hmm. So, But Great Barrington just recently um, um, beginning March something, I think, has a plastic bag ban too. Mm -hmm. So I'll let Jessica take over. Yeah, well, as Susan said, the city councilors in Northampton are, have shifted to s their focus on styrofoam versus the plastic bag ban. And my last conversation with my eco, Kristen, said that they had, they had approached North Attleboro and the lawyer there apparently found a line item in the budget where they were having to pay to extract the plastic bags from the MRF facility because they get all wound up and and so they realized, oh shoot, if we're already paying for that, that's not right, like, you know, let's let's ban plastic bags altogether because we're paying for this. Um, but Susan confirmed with Ned that there is no such line item in the Northampton budget uh, and Kristen was supposed to get a summary from the lawyer of, well, this is what we did in North Attleboro to try to see if it made sense to do something like that in Northampton or similar. I'm still waiting. She said it would be a week. 
and I'm still waiting to get that from her. So, you know, it seems like my eco is just trying to come up with these ways to try to get cities on board, but if that's not going to work here, I was, you know, I was saying to Jesse Adams, who talked to Susan about the styrofoam ban, that if they don't want to focus on the styro on the plastic bag ban now, we can use this opportunity as an educational time because I think, uh, you know, since people aren't calling their city councilors saying, "I really want you to try to pass a plastic bag ban," then obviously we have education to do to both inform people that this is an issue and that more and more towns are trying to pass this and they're trying to pass it. They've been trying to pass it at the state level for at least four years, probably five now. The problem with um, the plastic bag ban is that. And it's not a problem, but it's not, it doesn't seem as urgent as the expanded polystyrene because mm -hmm. plastic bags can be recycled and are recycled. They're used usually in um, composite lumber, like Trex lumber. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had used any of that for decking and stuff like that. So it is used, it's not used in huge quantity and the vast majority of them are not recycled, but there is an avenue for, for its use. Whereas with single use food, styrofoam there isn't mm -hmm. so in that respect it's a little more urgent but um, yeah so I was talking to Kristen about <clears throat> putting together a presentation you know she or was it Tom the gentleman who was helping her yes her business partner mm -hmm. yeah so Tom or Kristen would come and do a presentation to the city council to educate them and then they would find out about my eco and we could talk about the benefits of a plastic bag ban and I know when I've done that before it's multi you know multi beneficial in multiple ways you are both educating the city councilors you're also we had a reporter you know and i went in for help yourself to do a presentation a reporter wrote an article so then you get the word out to the public um you get this support you know sort of this initial support and it's in you know the educational opportunity so uh, i'm not sure if we're going to go ahead with that but and we don't, I mean, we can go ahead and do an educational campaign even without my eco. It just seemed mm -hmm. like with them, be, with them providing some resources and stuff like that, it, it made good sense to do it. And it, it also, it's better to build awareness about things before you try to ban them. Mm -hmm. It's just, it just makes sense. So the, the problem is we have limited resources and, you know, it, um, if, if we want to take this on and and try to open a, res uh, a swap a shop and you know it, there's only so much that we can do so it's uh, but mm -hmm. if there are other people that we can ban with or other 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 groups other you know whether in Amherst uh, we had the Amherst League of Women Voters joined with us and so they provided some mm -hmm. some energy and uh, talent and skills that we did not have so something like that could could help make something happen. I, I think that's a good point is who, are, who is most likely to partner with us? Mm -hmm. Who's most incentivized to get rid of plastic bags? I mean, the bag share people are already doing something mm -hmm. uh, toward getting rid of plastic bags, right? Mm -hmm. The reusable bags, but they may have more energy than just creating those bags, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's lobbying the city council mm -hmm. or, or doing whatever needs to be doing. But, but outside of the bag share group, who really, the environmental club at the high school, uh, the governor's council you were Absolutely. talking about it's really it would be worthwhile uh to to have a 15 minute brainstorming session Absolutely. uh to talk about this because you know our group as you say susan is limited in our resources but what what i see our job is doing is really initiating change Being and that catalyst. doesn't mean that we have to do it we need to just mm -hmm. kind of foster it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely and i i really think that with in this time of of budgets being stressed and cut and uh, in economically in the world, I, I think that the, the key to making things happen on a municipal level is really going to be about coalition forming and, and mm -hmm. working together with across a, a number of groups to make things happen. Um, and in the past, we've had there are lots of groups out there, but everyone kind of is working on their own thing, and I, and I really think that um, there's a lot of power in banding together um, towards a common goal. Yeah, I'm actually thinking it might make sense to call Sierra Club. I know their folks were on Main Street getting signatures for a bag ban, so, mm -hmm. you know, working with them. Right, and, and in Amherst, when we were, were pursuing the styrofoam 
ban. Mm -hmm. There, the Clean Water Action came to us. A number of people came to us and said, "Well, we want to do a bag ban." And we mm -hmm. said, "You know, we're doing a foam ban. We're not. We're not going to." We're not going to be able to pass both at the same time, so we're going to focus on our phone ban. And if you want to join us on the phone ban, that's great, but we can't really endorse you at this time. I mean, and that's that's an example of everyone kind of having their own pet project. And if we can start combining our power into one project at a time, it's it just be a lot more. So, Susan, you said that there's an industry mm -hmm. that uses these plastic bags. Mm -hmm. So, what about trying to uh, enlist? some part of that industry that will benefit from the collection of the plastic bags. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the opposite of a ban. Mm -hmm. This is instead of banning it, being uh, making it more easier for people to recycle their plastic bags, having collection points that all over the there city. There's the educational awareness piece, absolutely. So that may be something that's part of that 15 minute uh, brainstorming session where we, we do a little uh, research to find out who in Western Massachusetts really would benefit from having an enormous collection of these plastic bags. Mm -hmm. And now, just so you know, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District has a grant to collect agricultural plastic. And they mm -hmm. are, uh, so they're in the midst of, of um, Does that mean pellet bags? That grant. And well, you know, no, it the means the, the stuff, sheeting right? that they yeah. use over, over seedling. It means the, uh -huh. the marshmallow wraps yeah, the for the um, greenhouses, the marshmallow Plastic. wraps for hay. Uh, for hay. Mm -hmm. Although I believe they're adding pellet bags, but the, uh, that was not the original grant. Mm. Yeah, I mean, great. David, I guess I have to say I disagree with, I mean, that strategy only because so many, I mean, one of the major issues is that out in the ocean, I mean, all these plastic bags are just flying away, and I would presume only a small percentage of the plastic bags are being recycled and would continue, just like, just like mm -hmm. you see, you know, plastic bottles all over the ground because they don't have a deposit on them, uh, I, I get, mean, I get it's it. not going to... I get it, but you can't, at, at some point you have to decide what, what the, the best avenues are, and I'm not saying that... I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying you need to look at it as a as a parallel strategy, mm -hmm. because the ban has been elusive. It's been very difficult for us, even those of us that wanted to have it mm -hmm. in Northampton. I started working on that six years ago. Yeah. So, um, but let's move on to the next. I, I did just, just, just want to add. <coughs> yes, Peter. The um, with Kristen or you, did you find any city or municipality that put a tax on them, like 10 cent tax on, on a bag, so that would, you know, Walmart would have to add in 80 yeah. cents at yeah. the end, yeah. because, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, that's a more market friendly, yeah. you make your own decision, you want to uh -huh. pay 10 cents yeah. for a bag. I mean, my understanding from my research, you know, Ireland did that originally, they passed theirs back in the day, they charged so much for a bag, but when, I believe it was it was Los Angeles or it was a, it was a city in California tried to emulate Ireland, and the plastic bag industry went after them with millions of dollars in anti like an anti campaign, and they sued them saying um, this would be this is a tax like you are you are singling us out we have a plastic bag what about the paper bag now you know you need to charge for the paper bag, and so that was defeated and that's why California switched to their strategy of banning, completely banning plastic bags because they couldn't quote tax, you know, charge a tax for this. Okay, I, I have to end discussion on this, but I just want to say, Peter, it's it's illegal in the state of Massachusetts for us to tax bags. We've gone down that route mm -hmm. before. Oh. So, I, can um, I add just one thing for yes, the minutes? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to add that the um, state of Hawaii has banned plastic bags. Mm -hmm. That was a recent thing. Um, so, does... Uh, Jessica, is there any sort of subcommittee that you want to try and create here? Do you want to try and get a meeting together? Because I think you're most active in this area of the group that's She's here. Well, great. actually, but, yeah, I mean, actually, my, I mean, since there ha there hasn't been a lot, there haven't been a lot of you like jumping up saying, "Hey, I want to help." Um, <laughs> I'm actually wondering if at this point I should just go as a concerned citizen and sort and not represent the reuse committee and just go and work on these things because I mean sometimes representing us the city committee can be a little an impediment in some respects well, well what um, I, but even just because you have any number of us involved mm -hmm. doesn't mean it has to you don't have to identify yourself as part of the reuse committee right we all have lives outside of the reuse committee so you, you well, gotta weigh the benefits that's, i guess gotta, that's where it gets tricky i mean am i you know should i be because in parts of this project i have quote represented myself as a reuse committee member so should I stop doing that and just 
act like I'm a concerned citizen, just like you know, bag share person. And I, I think that we have to come up with a policy projects. about how we uh, take on the project. Well, at, or identify ourselves as part of the subcommittee or not. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that's mm -hmm. something for the next agenda. Mm -hmm. um, there are two more things to cover. One is who is going to be the next. Uh, minute taker uh, when Jessica takes over <coughs> for me in two months. So I have one more meeting after this one. <coughs> I have uh, something to say about that. I just checked why the minutes are useful for us, mm -hmm. but are they also mandatory as this is now mm -hmm. for the? Yeah, they have not been posted. I have them all ready to get posted. I just have to figure out. Right. Well, I just checked with Deb before mm -hmm. Debbie. And it seems, to, although you just had a lot to say, <laughs> good point. but I noticed when David was doing it and when Jack, I, d I don't see the minute taker being able to participate as oh, fully. Right. And, and I don't want to do this. I really don't. I'm, I'm not volunteering to do clerical work. For one hour of hour and a half per month, uh, it seems reasonable DPW could have Deb here to take minutes, make, make minutes, or, or whoever else out. Well, it, we, we have a policy that's established. If you yeah, want to bring that up in the next meeting, yeah, we can't have to change did, the policy. We voted on it. But, yeah. um, so who would like to, is anyone interested in taking minutes and then rotating into, uh, Mac, I don't know if you're going to be around at the beginning at, when we're talking about it, if you're going to be on your trip or not. Well, it's not, he's leaving soon. He'll be <coughs> back in March. Anyway, any volunteers? I'm happy to take notes. Um, I, I don't find it as that disconcerting about it. I'm not sure I really want to run meetings, but maybe in three months, maybe that would be good. <laughs> okay. But I'd be happy to. Do it. Okay, so John's going to be the next. And uh, should we just put the update in organics band, postpone that to the next meeting? Uh, I can make a quick update. And, right. and if, if there are questions, at the organics band, the Department of Environmental Protection's organics band has been postponed. The start date is now October 1st. Mm -hmm. And, but it is going forward. It was July 1st, it is now October 1st. That's, <clears throat> that's going to be banning food scrap waste from the trash for generators, uh, for those who generate more than one ton per week. So it prob likely will be hospitals, grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Schools. And, uh, possibly schools, but that's a tough one because it, it's, um, I, I, I'm not clear yet whether it's per school or per. They're, they're very clear center. about that in, in the, if you read the website, uh -huh. they're very clear about how they define that. Uh -huh. And I think it's per school. And my it? guess, it, it, yeah. according so to what I read, it would be per school. That's going to be tough. So it's possible okay. that some of the bigger schools, but on the other hand, the, you know, the, like a high school has more kids but um, they eat anything that isn't tied down largely and because they can pick their food in the cafeteria they tend to eat it mm -hmm. whereas younger kids don't get to pick what they get mm -hmm. and they there's a lot more food mm -hmm. waste mm -hmm. so we, we can okay. that's you know it's, it's to be but I mean it's still all good yeah. um, and and it's moving forward I, I would say that if anyone is interested we should come up with a um, uh, cut a group or one or two people to go around to the schools and do an audit of the recycling, which I did with Karen Bequillen about six years ago, which got the schools to start recycling because you wouldn't believe the excuses they had for not recycling. Um, so the idea, if they weren't recycling, to think that they might start composting, you can imagine that that's a stretch. But if they think that someone is watching, uh, it will make a huge difference. So uh, oh. we should probably put that on the next. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, yeah. For the next meeting, yeah. next agenda item. Like so, um, uh, any new business? Uh, I would like a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Excellent. Nice job. <laughs>